tipsy artist, and I do the world's largest paint parties. My mission in life is to teach everybody how to paint. Everybody! And now with this DVD, you can have the tipsy artist in the comfort of your very own home. So you can add personality to your painting with all groups of ages. I encourage you to pause or rewind the DVD so that you can work at your own pace. This art instructor painting party is sponsored by Royal and Lane Nickel. They are the makers of the Royal Soft Grip paint brushes and the Royal and Lane Nickel acrylic paint. It's smooth, thick, and creamy for a one coat application. It has a rich pigmentation, so a little goes a long way. And the brushes are super durable, comfortable, water resistant, and they have synthetic hairs for smooth application. I've given each of these brushes a fun name to remember. This is Big Daddy, Mama, and Little Bit. So remember, as the tipsy artist, I have two rules. Number one, there are no mistakes, only possibilities. Number two, every painting is divine with a little more wine. So let's get this party started. Tipsy! party started. I need everybody to raise your glass and on the count of three we're all going to yell tipsy. So here we go. One, two, three. Tipsy! Awesome. Very nice. Okay. All right. We have two very simple rules with our tipsy artist parties. Number one is there are no mistakes, only possibilities. So some of you will have a lot of possibilities. <laughs> yes. Next rule is, and I need you to raise your glass with me one more time. Every painting is divine with a little more wine. Yay, awesome. All right, we're going to be painting sweet birds today. And the first thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit about strategy. We are going to be starting with our templates. So you have a real sweet little bird here, and we're gonna trace around him. And you can do exactly like what I have shown with just two birds, or you can add more birds if you wanna make a really big family, or you can even just do one bird. So I'm going to position my first bird right about here. And I want to be thinking about where the branch is going to go. So visually, I need to be thinking the branch is going to be coming in through here and then across here. All right, and then you can use the same template. We just flip it over to the other side. There are my two sweet birds. All right, so now it is time to get started with our painting process. So I am going to be starting with my Big Daddy brush. So here's Big Daddy. This is the largest brush that you have. And the first thing that I want to do is I do want to get him to be a little bit moist. So I'm going to go ahead and push him into the water, and then I'm going to go ahead and wipe off my brush. 
It is really important to make sure that your brush is nice and dry after you get through giving it a bath because if you have any excess water on your brush, that excess water when you go to apply pressure on your canvas, that excess water will make an erase run and that kind of just makes this big white streak that goes through your canvas. So again, really important to make sure and dry them off. He likes that. So I'm going to take Big Daddy and I'm going to pick up a little bit of this white paint. I'm going to push it over here. And then I'm going to do a little tiny touch of this gold. And I'm going to push that through. And I'm going to push my brush back and forth into the paint. And this will make a really light, creamy color. All right, when I start to paint, we're going to be painting horizontal strokes with this creamy color. And I want to take my brush all the way across. The other thing I want to try to keep focused on is I want to make sure that the flat side of my brush is facing the canvas. So in order to do that, I need to make sure that my handle is going out to the side. A lot of beginners, when they start to paint, they actually hold the brush like a pencil, which feels very natural because that's how we hold the brush every day. But what happens is when you hold the brush like a pencil, it applies a lot of pressure to the canvas and it scrapes a lot of the paint off the canvas just as soon as you put it down. So what we want to do is we want to first of all make sure our brush is nice and loaded up with paint and then we want to hold that handle out to the side as much as possible so that the flat side of the brush is parallel to the canvas. We're going to be continuing this same stroke over and over again with a lot of repetition all the way up and down the canvas and we'll be doing this with the creamy paint that we mixed up and then the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure and put a lot of white through the sky. So after I get done with a stroke of just a creamy color. Then I want to pick up just pure white paint and I want to apply this to the top of my canvas as well. This way it looks like there are clouds running through the sky. then I'm also going to get just a tiny little amount of the aqua color and I'm going to run this through the sky as well. This is a really pretty effect. But I want to be very light and sparing with the aqua paint. All right, one very important note here, when you start to come in around the birds, you are going to need to switch to a smaller brush. So I'm going to switch to my little buddy brush, and I'm just going to go ahead and push him into the mix of paint that we have prepared, which is that nice creamy color. And I can also twist the head of the brush into the paint. This loads the brush, but it also twists it into a nice fine point. this small area painted in with Little Buddy, then I want to go ahead and switch back over to my Big Daddy brush.
right, so we are done with the background, and now it is time to go ahead and paint in our birds. All right, so I'm going to be using Little Bit, and I need the aqua paint, so I'm gonna load him up. This paint is very thick and high quality paint, so in order to extend the paint on the canvas in a more fluid manner, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more water to the paint. It just acts as an extender. And one really good tip in order to keep your hand steady is I have to go ahead and rest the weight of my hand on my pinky. It is now time for the break. We finished all of our background and our sweet little birds, and now we need to let this set up and dry for about 20 minutes. Okay, we are back from break. If your brushes have been resting in water, you need to make sure and take them out and go ahead and dry them off really well. Make sure and dry off the bristles, dry off the handles. Everybody excited about branches? <laughs> Way to go. Okay, I am actually going to get started with my Big Daddy brush here. This is the largest brush that you have. And I need to go ahead and load him up. So I'm gonna go ahead and press back and forth into the black paint. And again, if you need to add a little bit of water to act as an extender, please do so, it will really help. I also wanna make sure and check the edge of the brush. It needs to be nice and thin so that we can make nice thin lines. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just go for it. So I always tell people this is a good time to take a deep breath or get a nice little glass of wine and just relax. And then we're gonna go ahead and just make a line that's going to come all the way in here to about the center. Okay, it goes right into where they sit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and extend that beyond here. And then I'm gonna start to make a little Y shape. And then I'm not gonna worry about this center part just yet. I'm gonna use a smaller brush to get to that later. And 
I always want to paint the branch as it would grow. So for example, I'm going to start here. The tree grows from here and then it will grow out like this and then lift off with a light hand. Okay, and like I said before, we always want to paint in the same direction that a tree will grow. So always start from the center and then pull your brush out. And if you get little bumps along the way, like for example, I'm going to go ahead and just make one. That's actually a very good thing. Trees are naturally very bumpy and have lots of little imperfections. And so that's actually a nice little touch. So we're starting here with a little bit more thickness. And then as we come out, we lift off with a light hand. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this center branch in here, and I'm also going to go ahead and make my black outline around the birds. I am going to have to switch brushes, so I'm going to switch over to my little bit brush. I'm going to go ahead and load him up. I'm going to rotate the head of the brush into the black paint. That gives me a nice fine point. And then I'm going to go ahead and just connect this line right through the center here. And as I'm making my little thin black outline around the birds, remember the tip about setting your hand with your pinky. This thin line is optional. You can leave your birds just like they are here, or if you want a little bit more definition, you can paint the outsides. This is an optional step. Okay, next steps, I need to come in through the top corner as well, make a branch that comes in through the top corner. Then I need to come back in with little bit and do thin wispy branches. But for right now, I'm gonna have to go back with my Big Daddy brush. All right, so I've got Big Daddy ready to go. He's moist, he does have a little bit of black on him, but that's okay, because we're gonna reload with black paint. So I'm gonna press back and forth into the black paint. And again, very important, I've got a nice thin edge. So I'm going to start right up here in the corner on my line edge and just come on down. So 
I've given Big Daddy a rest in the water, now I'm going to take a little bit out. Really important, make sure and dry a little bit off with your paper towel. Because if you don't, you could end up with a really nasty run that will look a lot like a mascara run that will come all the way down your painting. And then I'm going to go ahead and reload a little bit to make some thinner, tinier, wispier branches on the very ends. just finished painting our branches so I had to give a little bit of bath and then we're going to load up with the aqua paint because we're about to start painting all of our leaves. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this to help the consistency because again this is very thick high quality paint so the water acts as an extender twist it into a nice fine point so when I start to make a leaf it's a very simple process. I want to tell my mind that it's like making a parentheses and then another parentheses. And then when those two connect, then it makes that leaf shape. And I just keep repeating this step. I do angle the leaves as they go up along the branch. is you have the option, you can either leave it hollow or you can fill it in. I leave some of them hollow and I leave some of them filled in.
gonna take a break from the leaves and now I'm going to trace out my sun or the moon, however the mood strikes you. And you can use your pencil and this, I'm using a washer. Uh, you probably have a little circle shape in your kit. So I'm gonna place that right here and then I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to trace around this circle. using the mama brush to go ahead and paint the inside of the circle. Make sure he is moist but dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and load mama up with the white paint. Here's a little trick with making a circle. I'm going to start in the center and then I'm going to push out to one side. And as the brush fans out, it makes a half circle. And then I'm going to start again in the center, push out to the opposite side, and then it makes a half circle to the other side. And I can just keep pushing out to either side until I fill that space. I'm going to be using my little bit brush. I'm going to come back in and do a nice thin gray outline and I'm going to grab a nice big dollop of white and then just barely a little touch of the black. I want a very light heather gray. I want a nice thin line so I'm going to go ahead and twist the head of the brush into the paint to get a nice fine point. Come back in with a little bit of white to help blend that in. And then I'm going to touch into a little bit of that gold and just get a tiny little mark there and then a tiny little mark here. It's kind of like making a little comma. And then I'm going to come back over the top of it with more white. Just blend that in. All right, we just finished <laughs> this guy. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. All right, we just finished painting our circle. So now we're going to be taking our little bit and we're going to be painting white. We have little white details that we need to sprinkle through the design. So let's talk about that. I'm going to grab my little bit brush. So I'm going to make sure and dry him off, dry off the handle. He's ready to go. Now I'm going to load the brush. So I'm going to go ahead and twist the head of the brush into the white paint. Alright, so when I start to make little details, I'm going to be making a comma, and then a little circle, and then also a little leaf. Okay, so now we're going to do the comma shape. Now we're going to paint a circle. Looks like a little Cheerio. And then we're going to paint a little leaf.
then as I come towards this circle shape, I'm going to be making lots of those little commas that come around that shape to look like a glow. Okay, after you get done doing your white pattern throughout here with your commas and your leaves and your little circles, then wherever you might have left some of those leaves that were blank, just hollow shapes of a leaf, we can go ahead and fill those in with some white paint. Alright, we have finished our beautiful masterpiece of Sweet Birds, so now it is time for me to do the famous artist signature because we're all accomplished artists now. So I need to rinse off my little bit brush. I need to make sure that I dry off the brush really well. Little bits moist but dry. And then I need to reload with some black paint. So again, twisting the head of the brush into the paint so it gives it a nice fine point.